You're listening to the Cash Flow Academy podcast with Andy Tanner, your source for investing made easy. Here's Andy Tanner. Welcome to the Cash Flow Academy podcast. This is Andy Tanner, your host, and this is where we do our very best to make investing simple and easy. And today we really do have an easy one. Uh, wonderful, wonderful guest today, DJ Vanis. And he has a book called The Warrior Within, Own Your Own Power to Serve, Fight, Protect, and Heal. And uh, I'll, I'll take a moment to introduce him uh, uh, just a bit. But to set the stage a little, I will, I will tell you this. When someone decides to be an investor and when someone decides to become an entrepreneur, whether they realize it or not, they're engaging in, uh, you know, in a journey of personal development. Uh, a lot of people do it just for the idea of getting, you know, I want to get rich. Or I want more money, you know, money, money, money. But in reality, investing in entrepreneurship will test you and it will find your uh, areas in, in our lives uh, that we can uh, that we can prove on and we can we can you know, engage in that self-improvement. So I, uh, I found that to be true with myself and with uh, all of my mentors. So uh, we have DJ Vanis here, and he has an interesting history on two fronts. First of all, uh, he graduated from the Air Force Academy, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So he has a, that tremendous tradition of discipline and military on one side. And he's also a member of, uh, of the Ottawa Tribe, Michigan, and so he has a very rich history with that culture. And those two things combined uh, bring a wonderful insight on doing better and toughness and all those things. So with that brief introduction, uh, DJ, welcome to the program. We thank you for coming. Thank you for having me today, Andy. I'm really happy to be here and looking forward to our conversation. This is going to be a lot of fun. You know, I'll, I'll let you uh, tell a little bit about yourself. First of all, what... You know, you, you started off with, uh, you know, your parents, uh, you became parents at a very young age and uh, you, you kind of had a rough start. Could you take us through that and, and kind of up to where you are today? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, the, uh, my, my family background, I'm originally from Muskegon, Michigan. I'm a tribally enrolled member of the Ottawa Nation. And uh, my extended family back home, you know, we have a lot of the same issues that we see uh, all too often. Uh, unfortunately, in society, uh, my extended family, we had, you know, broken homes, unemployment, uh, drug and alcohol addictions. We had suicide, incarcerations. My parents were teenagers in poverty when they had me. And so it was kind of a, a rough start uh, in, in that regard. And as I grew up, I realized that, you know, a, a key to transforming my life and going to those higher levels that I wanted to go to was going to be through education. And so as I got older, I, I really applied myself and threw myself into my work. And I wanted to be, you know, a contributor. I wanted to make an impact in the world. I wanted to live a life of adventure and service. And, you know, I thought that would be a really fulfilling road to take. And I grew up in a military environment. My dad joined the military. So he was in uh, the Air Force for 21 years. And so I was a brat. And so that had a big impact in my career progression as well and, you know, kind of highlighted what I wanted to do um, in, in regards to, you know, military service and just being a servant in general uh, was, a, that was a big influencer. So this is fun stuff. I was the, the only, I've been to the Air Force Academy and I went there to play basketball and I, I was the worst player in the history of my school, <laughs> but I was tall and, and I could play and we played the Air Force Academy on the road. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, it was, it's a game that sticks out in my mind like none of the game I played because we had much better players, much taller players, much stronger players, highly recruited players. And we mm -hmm. did, we were fortunate to win the game, but I'll tell you what, you could beat that team, but you couldn't break that team. And I don't know if people know what I mean by that. <laughs> is they were freaking tough as nails and mentally, while physically, you know, we're just bigger, but mentally, I mean, there were every other team that, that we played, we feel we could, you know, break them mentally pretty quick. And then it was easy. Yeah. That was not an easy win, man. Those guys are unbreakable. <laughs> Completely. We're, we're scrappy. We're scrappy. Just, that's for sure. Just, yeah, even our football team too. That was another, yeah, we, I get yeah. that. 
feedback quite a bit as we play teams that are a lot bigger, a lot stronger, a lot yep. faster. But um, we have heart, you know, and, and that's one of the things that I pride myself on, you know, from being a graduate from the Air Force Academy is the things that they put us through there really bring out your best version, you know, and through discipline, through training, through a lot of responsibility, um, high tempo, you know, over the four years. And uh, there's never, you know, there's never downtime, you know, and you're constantly pushing and grinding. But I tell you, it really does set you up for success as a business owner, an entrepreneur, you know, whatever field you get into in life, it really does uh, add a whole lot of horsepower to whatever your path is. So you're, you're, so that's part of, of the tradition in, uh, and your website is native discovery.com. You've, uh, authored several books. The most recent is the warrior within Own your own power to serve, fight, protect, and heal. I love the term warrior, you know, warriors, when, what comes to mind when I think of warrior, are things like first responders or people who fight, um, people who are, you know, who are ready to, to go to battle. What defines yeah. a warrior? If, you know, the warrior within, what defines that? Yeah, um, it's a loaded question or a, a loaded word. You know, there's a lot of baggage with it. And a lot of times we look at it through the stereotypical Hollywood kind of imagery. You know, that, that sweaty, chiseled figure that's, you know, knocking down buildings and bad guys and doing it all in the name of glory. <laughs> But when we talk about warriors for in our traditional, you know, in our tribal communities, the word has a very different connotation. You know, it's somebody who's dedicated their lives to developing their creator-given talent and ability over a lifetime so that they could be an asset or a benefit to the tribe that they served. So it was all about contribution. It was about leadership by example. Yes, there was times where fighting was part of that and sacrifice and defending and protecting. But it was also a role that was deeply rooted in service. Uh, that was the heart of that warrior role. Uh, we call a, a warrior in my tribe, Ogichi Da. And that term has very little to do with what we see in TV and movies. Um, it's somebody who asks the question, not what can I get, but what can I do for someone else? So that's ultimately what it comes back to. It's somebody who is a servant, somebody who is a contributor, and somebody who never takes their foot off the pedal when it comes to self-development and, and improvement because they realize it's not about them it's ultimately about who they serve. And so we constantly are, are in that mode of, of growth, transformation, so we can be better at what we do. So I, I really like the title, The Warrior Within. And I mm -hmm. think people might get caught up on the word warrior, but I really like the word within as well. And I'll tell you why. My kids, you know, your kids, the, the youth are growing up in a really interesting time. Um, nothing, you know, I'm only, I'm only in my fifties, so I still feel like I'm pretty young, but in my half century life, I've seen some changes and, uh, I, I am all for, you know, grabbing a sign and joining a throng of people and marching for whatever cause, uh, is good to bring more fairness to the world. I'm for that. I really am. At the same time, I don't have time often, often societal changes, to bring better fairness and better equality, those come at a glacial, like really slow geologic pace. It takes forever. I look at, uh, you know, for, for example, in uh, civil rights, in the civil rights arena, you've got guys like, you know, Owens and the late Bill Russell and Ali and all those guys, you know, they fought mm -hmm. for a long time and it just takes forever for that, for that to come. In the meantime, what I really like is what I teach my kids. I, I says, look, you're going to have adversity from something. I mean, you're certainly more privileged than maybe others, but there's others more privileged than you. We can all find a, a place where uh, something is unfair. And when you look within, I mean, when I look at the title of your book, Finding Power Within and Power to Serve Others and Fight Within Yourself, that can happen very, very quickly and yeah. uh, a person individually doesn't have to wait that we can fight for a, for for more social balance but in the meantime if a person doesn't want to wait that long uh there's power that's just like atomic like nuclear inside that can just blow through obstacles any thoughts yeah. on that yeah i mean a great observation i, I really love the insight and i and i agree with it 100 percent. i mean we can transform in a moment we can make different decisions. 
we can create impact, we can choose a path, choose a course, and see results pretty quickly when we do that. The other thing that happens is when we go through adversity, which I think everybody can relate to over the last couple of years, we go through transformation at not only a very deep level, but also very quickly. And, and that's one of the things that, you know, going through tough times, I know we complain about it. I know we wouldn't wish <laughs> the situations we sometimes find ourselves in. We wouldn't wish that on an enemy. But that's when our best stuff comes out. That's when we're, you know, you take a, 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 something as simple as a rock and a stick, you know, you shape that and carve it the right way. Our warriors could make a weapon out of that, that, you know, you could get dinner with or defend your village with. And it was just basically, you know, shaping and chiseling that into something that you wanted to see. We can do that with ourselves, you know, with our own character, our own habits, our own practices, our own development, our own knowledge base. You know, we constantly need to be chipping and shaping ourselves into what we want to become. And, and that warrior role, by the way, you know, that transcends race, gender, age, stage of life. It, it's there for anybody willing to walk the path that is, you know, committed to making a contribution to somebody else. But that definitely means that we're trying to become every day a better and better version of ourselves to impact those people in a, in a you know, deep and compelling way. It, it, it is an interesting uh, thing to think about in terms of, of our opportunities. You know, if we look maybe at financial um, situations, it, it is so interesting. I, I've got one of my sons at home schooling this year, and, you know, we talked about compounding, and we took $1,000 and learned how to turn it into a million dollars in his life. 1000 bucks. And with yeah. that simple lesson, <laughs> you know, he, he realizes that no matter what, disadvantages he I mean you can get a paper route and work hard enough to make a thousand dollars eventually right you can make a thousand bucks and then you have discipline and temperament to compound and eventually you have a million dollars in this world and it and it just yeah. shows that personal personal power now you've you've mentioned that this is about serving and yeah. uh and what what is it that brings fuel you know when when we talk about spirit and inspiration, you know, you bring breath in, something breathes life inside of somebody. Why does that so often come from something external, something bigger than yourself, than inside? Then, then, then for question. yourself, I yeah. guess. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's one of those deep philosophical questions, and it, and it speaks to our purpose, I think, in being here. You know, that the heart of that warrior role goes back to service for three reasons. And it, and it touches on the answer to this question. The first thing is service is our highest calling. You know, if we're not put here to serve, why the heck are we here at all? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, you know, service is our deepest need. Uh, we all have a need. Um, you have it, I have it, my kids have it, your kids have it, people we work with have it. And it's a need to feel valued at some level, so that we matter. And we can get some of that need fulfilled when we serve somebody else well. So, it, I mean, it's the ultimate game of connect the dots. You know, it makes us feel like a million bucks inside uh, when we serve somebody well. And the third reason why service is the heart of that warrior role is because it's our legacy. It's what we leave behind us when we're gone. And all the tribal communities I've worked with for the last 25 plus years, I've worked with over 500 tribal nations. And when those communities lose an elder, they have a celebration and a memorial, and they reflect on that elder's life. And they don't talk about, you know, that where the elder vacation or the car they drove or the clothes they wore. They talk about the moments that that person contributed to somebody else's life. You know, a moment where they shared some guidance, some wisdom, some insight, some encouragement, some humor. You know, a moment where they were a hand to hold or a shoulder to cry on to somebody who needed it the most. And every day of our lives, we're creating another puzzle piece in that image that we're going to leave behind us uh, in the end as well. And so that's why service is so compelling. It does, it, it attaches us to something much bigger than ourselves, you know, to, to more of a, you know, we, we have a philosophy in our tribal communities that we are all connected. And we leverage that when we serve other people well. We're connecting to that higher level type of feeling um, because we are getting out of our own heads and our own hearts and we're giving it away. And that's the best way to you know, I think gain wealth in, in this regard, you know, when we talk about the, the richness of, you know, fulfillment is we only get that by giving it away. 
So, you know, we've talked a little bit about owning our power to serve. And I'll tell you, you could go in any direction and find uh, opportunities there. You could go in any north, south, east, or west, right, left, up, or down, and you would find a cause, a person, something bigger than yourself. There's opportunities everywhere. So own your power to serve. Let's talk about fight. What do you fight for? Uh, what does a warrior fight for? Why is it important to fight? I, I tell my sons, I says, you know, you'll have external battles, but you'll have mm-hmm. internal battles. And, you know, there's a duality to us. You know, I, I fight with my stomach, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, all the time. And, you know, there's all kinds of body parts I go through that I'm always fighting. Right. And so uh, why, why is it important to know how to fight in life? It's important to know how to fight. We live in a tough world and, you know, we got to fight for the things that matter to us. Our warriors were always fueled by the idea that they fought for what they loved. And I think that's critically important. If you're not fighting for what, you know, if you don't love what you're fighting for, why the heck are you fighting for it? Why are you putting time, energy, and focus into a thing that you don't have love for? And, and that's a real quick way to identify what's important in your life. But fighting is, you know, that's an all in type of mentality. It's, being willing to sacrifice. It's being willing to get up a little bit earlier or stay up later or, you know, read that next book or have that next conversation, do that project. It's putting your time and effort into something that is worthy, um, something that you have a passion for that you're committed to, but nothing comes easy in this world. Growth is, is hard. Uh, building things is tough and it, and it takes that mentality of you have to be willing to fight for it. And it's not easy. And a lot of times people, you know, kind of get disheartened. And, I, and I'm talking in the book, you know, about the difference between, you know, surrendering and quitting. Mm-hmm. And surrendering is, you know, when we reach the end of our, our power, where what we're doing just isn't working anymore and sometimes can do more harm than good. Um, quitting is when we just get frustrated and we walk away. Mm-hmm. And the danger with quitting, you know, when we're fighting for something is we quit one time, then the next time is a little bit easier. And it's a, it's a really terrible habit to foster because it's one of the quickest ways to derail our progress and keeping us from where we ultimately can become, you know, where we can end up uh, on the journey. A couple of things I have that come to mind. Um, first, you know, there's, there's, there's an external fight um, always. And when my yeah. kids were uh, four years old, you know, we're ba- we're, a, we're a basketball family. We're tall and lanky. You know, my older son's about six, six now. And that was where we, you know, genetically, we just kind of, if you're tall, you kind of play and we love it. Yeah. But the first sport I put them in when they were four years old was jujitsu. And okay. the reason I did that is, you know, I fell in love with, with the mixed martial arts myself and there's a personal responsibility to protect yourself. There's a, every person, you can have all the laws you want, but when there's not an officer around, you have a personal responsibility for your own safety, I believe. I, I, I'm not very popular anymore, DJ. I'm kind of one of these guys that believes in personal responsibility for a lot of things. <laughs> I, I don't get very mad. We have a few listeners that still believe that way, I suppose. But, but to, I believe to be, in it too. Yeah. You know, to be able to confront someone and say, you know, first we taught him verbally. We said, listen, you know, if you get bullied, um, certainly you would want to, you know, talk to an adult and you would want to, you would want to solve that. But if you're in a situation where that's not possible, uh, you know, you need to look at some in the eye and say, listen, um, if you're trying to start a fight, I'm not afraid of you. Otherwise leave me alone. And, yeah. and to be able to, to have that confidence. So there's, there's that there's evil in the world. If, if a person doesn't stand up and use their free speech in a very positive way, you'll lose it. If a person doesn't yeah. stand up and fight for their freedom, people will take it. And, yeah. uh, and, and history has shown us, as we're seeing even in, in conflicts around the world right now, if you do not value your freedom, uh, you'll lose it. You will. Any, yeah. co- any yeah, thoughts on that come- idea? Yeah, it doesn't doesn't come easy, and it's and it's hard one, and uh, we do have to be willing to step up to it. And and as far as the you know that idea of you know personal you know being able to defend ourselves, I, I've always been a big believer in that too. I mean, our our girls did uh, taekwondo when they were kids. Uh, I boxed in college. I did uh, krav maga for four years. 
Um, I, I'm a big believer in that as well because for a few reasons. Um, you know, one, that personal, you know, being able to protect yourself is important, but it's also the feeling of confidence knowing that you can. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you're, you're able to radiate an energy around you that I, I think is your first line of defense. You know, when you walk through this world and you know, you know, what you're capable of, you know that you're strong, that you're taking care of yourself on purpose, with purpose. You know, I think the world tunes into that, and there's a, a level of um, respect that I think comes from people who are willing to do that for themselves. And so I think that's really important. Plus, you, you know, you learn self-discipline, um, you learn teamwork, you know, there's iron sharpens iron. You know, that was yeah. always a really important part of training was you don't get better. Uh, you get better a lot faster when you're in the company of other people who are trying to improve as well. And so I, I think that's also really important, but you know, it, that's, that's one of the things we have to be willing to step up to the plate for is being able to protect ourselves uh, in this world because, you know, it's, it's tough. People will tell you how you th- how you should think, how you should act. You know, the world's full of judges and critics and until we're able to stand on our own two feet and defend ourselves, you know, the world can kind of roll us, you know, if, if we allow that to happen. I mean, sometimes we wait for somebody to come over the hill and save us in a moment where we need to save us. But it, but it's also mental, right? I mean, you know, I, I trained a little bit of martial. I'm not, you know, like a stud black belt Bruce Lee. I, I can handle myself. But more importantly is the mental part of fighting in that all of a sudden, you know, you go into the doctor and he says, Andy, uh, you've got cancer. And then, you know, a few years later, you know, last, in fact, last November, um, you know, my wife goes for her exam and then they say, okay, you're going to fight cancer now. And so that's a fight and that's not a person. That's a thing. Uh, it could yeah. be a financial setback. It could be a divorce. It could be the loss mm-hmm. of a child. Um, resilience and toughness. Um, I don't know if it makes life easier, but it kind of makes life easier. The tougher we are, the more resilient we are, the more we have that self-belief, like I will not be defeated. Keep punching, baby. Um, yep. It's a huge thing, uh, knowing how to fight. Any final comments on fight? And then we'll talk about protection. Yeah, it is. It is mental. I mean, that's where it starts and that's where it ends. You know, it, it's, a, it's a mental mindset that you have towards uh, your obstacles, towards your challenges, towards fear, is being able to stand there in the, in the midst of the storm and say, I will find a way forward. You know, you can knock me down, but you're not going to knock me out. I'm going to keep crawling towards the finish line that I've set up for myself, and I'm not going to stop. And that's a decision we get to make. And when we have that kind of commitment, you know, before the fight even starts, that's what is going to ensure our victory. You know, we're basically predetermining the outcome. By before, you know, it's, things get rough, we're going to make, you know, we're already saying, I'm going to keep going until. And, and that's a powerful stance to take in this world. And, and that's what's going to get us to where we're headed. You know, not saying, well, I'm going to get into this, and if it's comfortable, uh, you know, that's great. Or if everything lines up, then maybe I'll get lucky here. That's a different type of mindset, and that's what, you know, that, when times get rough, those are the people who bail. You know, but when you stand there and say, I'm going to figure this out, no matter what happens, those are the people you can't stop them. So I was looking at Warren, I, I look at Warren Buffett's annual letter and every year they put all his returns year by year on there. And about four or five years into his deal, he lost 48% of the portfolio, half, mm-hmm. you know, that guy had to, find, I can't imagine you raise all this money and, you know, people have invested in your stuff and you you've lost half, you know, it's incredible. Yeah. If you're going to be an entrepreneur and you're going to be an investor, I don't know anyone that has ever won Entrepreneur of the Year award and said, God, you know, it was pretty easy. I've no one to thank. There were no dragons to slay. There was no one to help me. There was no moments of peril. You know, uh, in fact, I'm, surp- I'm surprised all you guys are an Entrepreneur of the Year because it was so easy to do. It, it takes yeah. fight. Let's talk about protecting. What do we need? What, when you say protect, what do you want? What do you want to protect? Well, first of all, you have to protect yourself. You know, we, we were just talking about that. That's mm-hmm. where it starts, because if you can't protect yourself, you're not going to be able to serve anybody else or protect anybody else. You know, one of the things I talk about in the book is, is that idea of self-care, you know, taking care of ourselves to be able to stay resilient, because one of the things I'm adamant about, and I mentioned this in the book, 
is you can't be a warrior when you're falling apart. Mm-hmm. You can't be a contributor. You can't serve anybody when you're a hot mess. Mm-hmm. You know, when you have, you know, you basically become a debris field as a human being and like look at the pieces and go, how did I get here? You know, where we get burned out, we get apathetic. So we've got to take good care of ourselves. And that's one of the things that I know is tough when you're giving it all away. But at the end of the day, you know, the way that we eat, the way that we take care of our bodies, our minds, our spirit, you know, how much sleep we get at night, all those things are critical if we want to deliver 100% of who we are and what we can do. Um, If we don't do that, we're showing up into our life, into our responsibilities on a half-charged battery and expecting 100% results. Uh, That's like planting carrot seeds and expecting coconuts to grow. That's a complete disconnect from reality. So that's the first line of protection is, is ourselves. You know, take, I, I, this is one of the things I say, it sounds kind of Dr. Seussian, but it's the absolute truth. You are the only you that you will ever have or be in this world. Act accordingly. Mm. You know, if we're not protecting the vessel of all this great service, it won't be delivered. So we've got to take care of ourselves first and foremost. One of, I, I love the idea of protect. I, I had a, uh, he's not a close friend, more of an acquaintance, but there was a, a great NBA player. He was an all-star. Maybe people don't remember him. His name is Mark Eaton. He was seven foot four. And uh, he was kind enough to, to, to uh, you know, sign a, a book for my kids. And he said there were four principles of winning team. And one of the things he said is protect others. And it was kind of fun yeah. as, at his size that he saw himself as a protector of his teammates. And, uh, yeah. you know, when you look at your business, you protect those that work for you or work with you. You protect your family. You protect your friends. You, you know, I love the mm-hmm. word tribe. You know, when you say this is my tribe, there's a feeling of belonging to your tribe. I love that stuff. And you but, protect your tribe. And yeah. that was what a warrior's purpose was. You know, it wasn't to protect themselves. It was to fight for something bigger than self. But it starts with them taking care of <laughs> themselves first, you know, to, the way that they ate, the way that they slept, took care of themselves spiritually, yeah. so that they could be in a position to protect their people. That's what it came down to. So, yeah, critical. Fantastic stuff. Finally, the last one is heal. And that's mm-hmm. a beautiful, beautiful word. You know, you can heal physically. Some injuries can't be healed. But, uh, you know, the word warrior, I have a, a, a dear, dear friends, uh, Josh and Lisa Lynn, and they have a a place in Texas in Bandera called it's a 500 acre ranch called warrior's heart. And what happens is, is when warriors have the PTSD, the first responders, the military, the, the officers, the paramedics, uh, they can go there to heal. Their tagline is strength through healing. And, yeah. uh, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. If someone's down and out, how do you heal? I mean, if you know your own power to heal, do we have power to heal ourselves? Yes. Yes, we do. Um, we don't have to do it alone. Uh, we do it with, you know, the company of other warriors, which always uh, adds a lot to our healing process, but yes, we can heal ourselves. And, and part of that has to do with the way that we look at what we're going through or what we've been through. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things I talk about in the book is, you know, developing mental toughness and, you know, and, part of this healing process is when we're going through those hard times is, is asking ourselves, you know, some questions like, what am I telling myself about what I'm going through or what I've been through? That story is part of our creation. I mean, that we, we get to define, you know, the situation that we've just been through, but we talk about PTSD, which we all are familiar with, but there's also post-traumatic growth. And a big part of whether, you know, what we go through breaks us or builds us has to do with that question. What story am I telling myself about what I've been through, you know, about this situation I'm in or have been through? We get to define that. So that, that's a big part of it. I also talk about medicine in the book um, from a traditional standpoint, not medicine like we see in general society where we think of a pill or a vaccine. But medicine in our tribal communities was anything and everything that kept us healthy and strong, mm. mind, body, and spirit. So this could be time with our friends, time alone, enough sleep, playing, you know, uh, playing sports, pursuing a hobby, spending time outdoors, watching funny movies. Anything and everything can qualify as medicine. Um, but that's also something that we didn't seek out when we were already sick and out of balance. It was something we incorporated into our lives daily to keep ourselves healthy and strong. Um, 
but healing is, you know, when we get our, you know, our, our uh, bell rung in life, you know, emotionally, uh, we have to have strategies in place. And I unpack that in the book on what we can do when, you know, I have a chapter called when the wolf comes, mm. you know, when times get really bad, when they get really hard, you know, what do we do? And that's an important thing to know before you get into those tough moments because they are going to come. But when you're prepared, you know, a prepared mind finds a way, you know, to navigate even the craziest storms. And that's, that's a big part of, you know, the preparation, you know, for battle is getting ourselves ready, you know, mentally surrounding ourselves with the right people, having the right habits and practices in place. And then knowing when things happen, it's not about life being unfair. I mean, it's, this is the universe. We all, you know, the universal connector is pain. Um, but when it happens, knowing that we can find a way through gives us a lot of confidence to make that a reality. There's, there's a spectrum as a parent and as a coach, I look at on the one end, uh, there's abuse, which is completely um, out of line. It's intolerable. It's unconscionable. But on the other end of that spectrum might be uh, coddling. One, mm-hmm. one causes broken bones and the other causes brittle bones. And, and I think that, that you know, if we, if we think about a lot, we want to find somewhere in the middle. I, I, I don't know the specifics, but from what little I know, it seems in, the, you know, in, those, tri- in those tribes, there's almost always a coming-of-age ceremony where uh, a young man or woman is going to go through some type of physical and mental test that's very, very difficult. It's a coming of age thing. And, yeah. you know, in our day, someone might look at that and says, well, that's antiquated. Uh, that's, you know, barbaric. That's uh, base. That's not, you know, that's below. That's uncivilized, they might say. But in a way, those ceremonies are a gift. In my opinion, um, could you give a final they question are. on that? Could you give an insight on that type of, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I go into the, I volunteer at the high school now and you got to be careful. I mean, you, you know, anything can, you know, bullying now is anything. So you just have to really be careful. That you don't trigger any kids. Can you talk about that or are we allowed to talk about that? Or are we going to get in trouble? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the thing is with our ceremonies, they are hard, they're tough, and they're meant to be that way. Because when we go through the ceremonies and we go without food or water or shelter, and you know, I've been through traditional ceremonies like Vision Quest or, or Sundance or going through you know, sweat lodges, um, which are less intense but can be you know, pretty, pretty tough. But some of the traditional ceremonies are really, really hard. They're grueling. And people always wonder, well, why, why do you go through something like that? Well, because what you're exchanging is your comfort and your familiarity. You're exchanging that for insight, growth, wisdom, and transformation. And that doesn't come easy. You know, when we go through tough times, that's when our best stuff comes out. Mm-hmm. And so that balancing between, you know, being abusive and coddling, you know, finding that middle ground is, is key uh, for our continued growth and development. You know, one of the things I talk about in the book was, uh, a katana blade, you know, carried by the samurai in, in Japan. It was the finest sword ever crafted by human hands because it was made from two types of metal. One had hardness, which resisted impact and, and doesn't flex under strain. But if you build the whole sword that way, it breaks. It's brittle. So the second type of metal has what metallurgists call toughness. Uh, so it's a softer metal that can absorb impact. Mm-hmm. It can flex under strain. And that's what makes the katana, you know, such a such an incredible weapon. Um, we can develop that in ourselves too when we're able to, you know, kind of deal with the emotional setbacks. When we're able to look at what we're going through as not life is unfair, but this is a learning moment. And and that's like I said, that's when our best stuff comes out. We don't we don't learn a lot when the sky is blue and our belly's full, but mm-hmm. we learn an awful lot and we learn it fast when things go sideways or get pear shaped. <laughs> and so, and that's one of the blessings, I guess, of going through tough times in life is if we can keep our head in the right space and say, this is a learning moment. I'm going to be transformed by this. I can make it through this. I can do hard things. And I'm not only going to get a lesson for myself, my own benefit, but I'm going to be able to share this with others, you know, people that I love, people that I serve as well. And when we have that kind of mentality, you know, we can get through anything. 
Well, DJ, I, I can't thank you enough. You've been very gracious with your time. I will, I will close with this thought, and then I'll give you the very last word. You are who you hang out with. And if, if you'd like to bring more toughness to your life, like to bring, you know, tap inspiration, tap the, the power to serve or fight or protect or heal, uh, drop by Amazon.com or even Audible and get the audio book and feed your brain with these things that will give you life and breath and, nutri- and, and mental nutrition. Uh, I, I often decry places like Netflix uh, and Hulu and Instagram where we'll scroll and scroll after a hard day's work trying to find some type of dopamine hit uh, with things that are maybe not as healthy for our brains. And so, yeah. you know, I'd invite you to go to Audible and get the audiobook or Amazon.com and spend some time with DJ because I, I, I think it makes our nation stronger. Uh, I think it makes uh, our families and our tribe stronger if we can develop and tap uh, this warrior within and find our own power to serve, fight, protect, and heal. If someone is, uh, is going to go into entrepreneurship or investing, I can give you investing education. I can give you classes. I can show you, you know, sequences. But I cannot eliminate risk and I cannot eliminate the, the need for discipline and temperament and resilience. Um, that comes from guys like, uh, like DJ. So any, any final words for someone who might feel that, man, they've really had a rough time, rough year. They've, they've kind of had, like you said, their bell rung a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, do you, how do you get up off the canvas? You, I'll give you the last word to, to kind of speak to those folks who've been beat up a little bit. Yeah, no, I, I, we can all relate to that. And that's exactly why I wrote this book, The Warrior Within, is to help people navigate forward, you know, be able to continue to develop themselves to get through those tough times. You know, it was written for those frontline people who have dedicated their lives to serving other people. And, you know, whether it's in healthcare, education, benevolent businesses, military, you know, government, what, what it, those people who have dedicated themselves to making a contribution to someone else and who have struggled mightily in the last couple of years to do that and stay sane and balanced and healthy in the process. And so the book, you know, when, when people read this, I hope they have a renewed sense of confidence in who they are and what they can do in this world. Um, the, the book is full of strategies, stories, anecdotes, and useful ideas uh, to help people become better versions of themselves using some very traditional and timeless principles that our warriors in Native America have always espoused and used during the worst of times, and they've been proven to work um, in, in those worst of times. So I, I think the ideas, you know, I, I'm passionate about sharing them. Um, I think they're as, you know, uh, relevant as they ever have been, and I would argue they're more needed today than they ever have been. So I uh, hope you get a copy of The Warrior Within, um, and I hope you enjoy it, and leave me a, a review when you do. I, I would be grateful. You've been listening to the Cash Flow Academy podcast, where we do our very best to make investing simple. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the conversation, and we'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Cash Flow Academy podcast with Andy Tanner. For more information on investing made easy, go to thecashflowacademy.com.